so quiet all of a sudden. <laughs> um, okay. Can everyone hear me? Is the mic working and everything? Yeah, amazing, thank you. Uh, before we begin, uh, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners on the land that we meet on today, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and I pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging. Sovereignty was never ceded. So welcome to I Made You Some Content, the Community to Content Pipeline. Uh, this talk will hopefully uh, give you an idea on how to create a content strategy that involves your community members. Um, it can be really daunting to ask community members to create content for you. It can be really scary, kind of trusting that they are gonna come up with something that works for you. Um, but basically we're gonna go through creating content pillars, um, utilizing analytics to kind of see what's performing the best and uh, understanding your audience needs and hopefully by kind of bringing these three things together, you'll walk away kind of confident creating an ongoing content strategy. E. All right. So this is me, I'm Pritika, uh, my pronouns are she, her. I've been a community manager for over six years now. Uh, the majority of that has been in the games industry here in Australia. I freelanced a lot. Um, up and, and I did work in like the mental health space and games for a bit. And I also helped out with events, doing comms for the Free Play Independent Games Festival. Uh, I currently work at a non-games company. Uh, it's a social media agency called Quip. We are online community and social media specialists, um, and we're a certified B Corp, which means that we're committed to purpose-driven projects that do good in digital spaces. We've got about over 20 community managers, and they're kind of distributed all around Australia and also all around the world uh, because we offer 24-7 moderation. Um, I particularly, uh, like on my clients that I work for at work, I specialize in arts and advocacy and mental health. Um, and personally, I like the cozy game space, so if that's something that you want to talk about afterwards, please come and talk to me. Um, I'm also recently a scout for WINGS. For those of you who don't know, WINGS is a funding body. Uh, they're based over in Europe and have had a hard time getting people to come to them asking for funding. Um, WINGS invests in indie games, which... Uh, uh, Sorry, Wings invest in indie games made by teams where women and marginalized genders uh, are developers that hold key positions. So if that's something that interests you, again, I'm around. <laughs> this is normally me on a daily basis. I generally don't know what I'm doing. Um, but, you know, I find a way. <laughs> uh, the internet moves really, really fast which can be very overwhelming when it comes to creating a content strategy. Um, so it's important to know that when you are building your strategy, it should encompass who you're targeting, uh, what your game is saying, uh, when and where you are posting, and how that process is managed. Um, it's totally up to you what, on what works best in terms of your management style. I've had teams use Trello, use Asana. Uh, I personally use Google Sheets. It is the easiest thing to use with my team because I can create a content calendar and then I can create tabs with briefs for my designers. Um, so if you are working, if you're like the sole community manager or marketer on your team, but you want the art team to create content for you, it's a very easy way to like give them the Google sheet and a little brief of like GIF of character doing X, Y, and Z. Like that's, that's a great way to hand over stuff. Um, ideally, uh, there should be, in terms of like visualizing a Google Sheet, there should be like a column for your content pillar. Uh, so what pillar the content falls under. Uh, one for the date, so when it's going to be posted. Uh, one for the image, because you can now put images in Google Sheets and it's amazing. Um, one, and then one for your copy. And then that copy can change depending on which platform you're going to be posting on. Um, these Calendars can be created monthly or quarterly, even weekly. Um, it really depends on what your content cycle is and what you feel most comfortable with. I like monthly because that means I can spend like a week or two kind of 
nutting out the content, figuring out what I need, and then I also have gaps in there for user-generated content and gaps for any trends that might be upcoming that I can easily pivot um, so that my content uh, is like seen as timely and it looks like I didn't prepare anything, it looks like it was effortless, but actually I'm, I'm cataloging all these trends trying to figure out what works best. Your content pillars are like kind of the basis, in, like basis to inform your content going forward. Um, they should be an extension of your game pillars. Sometimes they can be a one for one. For example, Stardew Valley's gameplay pillars, like it's a farming game, right? So their gameplay pillars would probably be farming, relationships, crafting, and mining. Like those are four very broad categories of what encompasses in the gameplay, uh, but they're easily translatable to content pillars as well. Um, some, a game like Elden Ring uh, would probably have more emergent pillars in there because of how players kind of treat the game. Um, so let's say it would have combat, exploration, and lore, um, but then it would also, it could include like skill mastery, and they probably factored this in because it is a Souls-like game, so the skills mastery is definitely gonna be an emergent uh, pillar that comes out of once the game's released. Um, but they can showcase gameplay that kind of focuses on that across their channels. Um, your pillars don't have to be super prescriptive. I know the examples that I gave there were pretty cut and dry, not a lot of room for movement. Um, but they can be super broad categories. It really depends on your game and your mood and what works best for your team. So it could be something like uh, fun, you know. Um, but yeah, that's how I would go about it. Uh, if you take anything away from this talk, I would say always be researching. Always have um, like a TikTok, like TikTok accounts that you review every week or Twitter accounts or wh whatever you do. If you passively consume content like I do, like I am very much online TikTok every day. I'm on Twitter every day. I understand that is not a lot of people. Like those social medias can be very intimidating. But if you are, use the save button, like catalog things that you think can be used as inspiration for your game. Um, trends move really, really fast. Um, like you can see, I don't know if anyone was in the unpacking keynote, uh, yes, not yesterday, the day before, it's Wednesday now. Um, but they had like a toilet paper gif at the start of March 20, like that was mwah, beautiful, that was amazing. <laughs> like that is a great way of using timely content. Um, if you do end up using content that is like after the fact, um, there is a risk that you'll be seen as cringe and uh, that's, not, that's not the best. Like you wanna, be make sh you wanna make sure that everything that you create is timely. Uh, so if you're not chronically online like I am, uh, I suggest setting 30 minutes to an hour per week. You might find this is more if you're doing a lot of research, um, but check in on TikTok, on Instagram, on Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, whatever people are talking about. Like if you can relate the Try Guys drama that's happening right now to your game, like there's nothing stopping you from doing that. <laughs> oh, and also you don't have to be the only one researching. Like if you have a company Slack and memes are being thrown in there, that's content. That is like if you know other people are talking about this, chances are your audience is gonna be talking about this. Um, this is the really hard message, I guess, in my talk, in that it is impossible to be across just one platform now if you are releasing a game. Uh, companies uh, like are expected to be across multiple platforms, which is a lot of work. Like, you know, creating unique content for TikTok, like that's got its old set of goals, and then Twitter, and then Instagram, and all of that. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of work. And that's where the content strategy comes in. So ideally, you've created all this content, you've scheduled it out for posting, and then you spend all that time forming relationships with people who are commenting or liking your content. 
um, it's really, really important to engage. It's really important that you are not posting and running away because that's where the community building comes in. That's where you get people going, oh, they liked my comment. Maybe I will check out their Discord. Um, oh, maybe I will. I can see they've got a wish list and they've just like replied to my comment or they've stitched my TikTok or something. Maybe I will go and wish list and maybe I will go and tell my friends to wish list as well. Like that's what we want people to be doing when it comes to your games. Um, so in order to make sure that you are not overwhelming yourself and like putting yourself on all platforms all the time, prioritize which platforms you're um, uh, work best for you. So maybe you start out posting across like three of them, let's say uh, TikTok, um, Reddit and Twitter, and you see Reddit's really not doing very well. Like, drop that and then maybe try Instagram. Like content strategy is always evolving. Um, this is the time where I'm now going to go through all of the, like, cover all of the platforms. The only one that I'm not gonna cover is Facebook, and that's because it can be covered in the Instagram. Like, it's owned by Meta, like, same, uh, same kind of strategies apply. So just kind of keep that in mind. But we're gonna start off with Twitch. Um, I hope all of you are on Twitch, or at least have a brand account on Twitch. Um, these, this is your influencer platform. These are the people that you want to be building relationships with. Um, the, these are the people who are gonna be your bastions when you start releasing keys um, and demos. They, they are the ones who will like shout out loud and show off, show off the game for you. Um, so definitely be in there watching them playing, uh, commenting, thanking them as well. Uh, that goes a long way because then the streamer feels gratified that they've done a good job and uh, they're more likely to say more nice things about your product. Um, if your game's in a playable state or even if you are like 3D modeling, I don't know, concepting something, don't be scared to stream these concept sessions. It, it is kind of intimidating to get out there on Twitch um, and put your work forward, but a lot of people are very forgiving of like early work, like they're very happy to just be involved and be part of the process. They walk away and they're like, oh cool, I got to see like the behind the scenes of a, a game dev studio, that's awesome. Did you see that they're doing that? Um, it's, it's really exciting for your community to see that you are willing to be that open. So it's something to consider. Um, and yeah, as I said, watch people who play your game and uh, use their feedback to prompt uh, ideas. And yeah, observe and engage, but also capture and reshare. Capture with permission. Like if you have VODs going around of people playing your game and you want to reshare that VOD on like uh, Twitter or like turn it to like a little highlights thing for your YouTube as like a trailer or something, um, always make sure that you have permission. I'm probably going to be banging on about that a lot in this talk. But make sure you have written permission for any content that you are going to be using. TikTok. Um, the one that is probably the most scary and the one that you should probably be on. Like, there's no way around that, unfortunately. Um, who here is on TikTok just for, like, a personal? Yeah, cool. A few of you. That's awesome. Um, so you'd know that you just, like, in your For You page, you just get fed content. That's why it is now seen as the best for reach. Um, most other platforms like, that I'm going to talk about, like Instagram and Twitter, it's really hard to get reach on there now, um, especially if you don't have AdSense. Like AdSense is going to buy your way through to reach, and Instagram definitely, and Facebook definitely. But TikTok, because it is the most playful and because the algorithm is constantly changing and the developers are constantly um, changing it to make sure that content gets viewed as much as possible, it's the best place to be playful. You can play around with styles and aesthetic. Um, if you are confident enough to like put your face on camera and like use some of those meme formats that are out there, um, don't, don't do this because this is an old trend now, but <laughs> the first one that comes to mind is the It's Corn song that came out like about a month ago. People were like relating that to video game characters that they loved and that's definitely something that you can use if you have a character-based game. You know, even for Stardew, you can just be like, it's corn in the game. So, <laughs> um, 
yeah, easy to follow memes, uh, formats to replicate, but also I would say that there are a lot of game curators. There are a lot of people who just love games on there and love talking about games. Um, those are your ambassadors. Like those are the people that you want to target um, and like talk to them about collaborating with you, even like stitching or duetting these and like showcasing that you are really thankful that they talked about your game is a great way to utilize um, content growth. Um, I don't know if anyone went to Victoria Kershaw's talk on TikTok yesterday, but a lot of what she said is um, kind of what I'm following on about exactly, <laughs> essentially. Uh, the one other thing is that TikTok out of all the platforms is the hardest to remove problematic content from. Uh, TikTok do not like it when you delete things. They will actually punish you and like limit your numbers. Um, so always archive something. And if there is something that you really do need to delete because it is becoming very problematic for you, reach out to your hopefully TikTok account manager or contact for that purpose so you can plan your content strategy around then. Instagram is an interesting one because it's trying to become TikTok part two. <laughs> like, it, it's essentially prioritizing reels. It's really hard to get going with just image-based content, which again can be quite hard for those of us who are content creators and have to create um, new content all the time. Um, I would focus on cross-posting what you have on TikTok. There's like no shame in that. That is quite a common thing that creators will do now. But I would edit it in a third party app or even if you use like Premiere and you're happy to edit it like vertical, um, make sure you do that to avoid cross posting with the TikTok logo in there. Instagram actually um, sees that and they will deprioritize your content because of that. They will not push that out. Um, so it's really important to make sure that you are not, you don't have any big logos, they like clear screen, they like faces. Um, that's, that's what Instagram prioritizes. Uh, utilize stories. Stories is a great way to keep people interested in you on, um, on Instagram. Um, it's the best way to kind of share important updates to the audience that lives on them um, and also showcase fan art because you can just, if you find something, you can just click the share button and click share to story and then you can yell to everyone about how amazing the fan art is quite easily. Um, and also you can conduct surveys. They have a whole lot of stickers on there that you can easily just um, uh, pop in when you're making the content. While stickers and interactive content are the best way to utilize it, Instagram stories is probably the most hands-on work that you have to do with content um, because there's no way to schedule it. You have to be in the app, you have to be on your phone. Um, posting it in time, and then you have to go back into your phone later to see if anyone's answered and share those answers. Um, so it is kind of the hard, the, I guess time-wise, make sure you've blocked out enough time to be able to post something, um, to be able to look over to see if you've made any like grammar mistakes or something like that. Just be aware of that if you are gonna utilize stories. Twitter is the yelling platform. That's the one I like. <laughs> That's what I um, call it. Uh, but it's also your stakeholder and your peer platform. Uh, that's where a lot of game devs live. That's where a lot of companies are. Those are the people who are going to be your bastions because they know what it's like to be a game dev, to be a team getting your game off the ground. Um, so that is also that also makes it easy to create in-depth written content. Blog pieces used to be a separate piece of content that would live on a website somewhere and you'd share a link. I would argue you can turn those blog pieces into Twitter threads because a lot of people, like the less clicks people have to have, the more likely they're gonna have your, their eyes on your content. So like take those blog pieces, turn them into digestible threads um, or thought pieces. Uh, the developer who does this really well at the moment is Ian McClarty, who is making uh, Mars First Contact and like just released a demo and has done some really interesting thought pieces and like programming pieces of going into the code and like how everything um, is created. Unpacking did a really good job too. Ren and Tim both um, made sure to showcase gameplay elements on their own channels as well as on their studio, no, their game account as well. If you do go down the route of having a game account, which I would encourage, make sure that you showcase a human tone of voice, that's TOV. 
Um, it should be reflective of your game. It should tie into the themes of your game. So for example, uh, Boyfriend Dungeon that came out a couple of years ago uh, utilized a very thirst trappy tone of voice. It's a dating sim, right? So that's what they're gonna be doing. They're gonna be showcasing all the sexy people that, they're, that are in their game. They're gonna be thirsting over them and they're encouraging their community to do the same. And that's how you got thirst trappy content about all the characters in the game that they later cross posted across all their platforms. Um, Unpacking has a very chill tone of voice. Uh, they understand that their game is gonna be played by people who are very meticulous, who are very particular. And that's, uh, and again, the kind of content that they got from people are, are particular meticulous, like look at how good my, um, my room looks after I tidied it up, basically. So really be aware of what kind of genre your game is and what kind of voice fits that. Um, audiences will first go to Twitter for updates. Um, and so I would say that the platform that you have to monitor the most is Twitter because if something happens, if your game breaks, um, people are gonna be tweeting at you constantly. When's the next patch going live? What are you gonna do about this? So you need to have media statements ready and like risk documentation ready so that in the face of a crisis, you have things to look over so you're not kind of flailing and, you know, I think Kelsey said this in her talk yesterday, but if you're in the face of a fire, your first thing is to go, oh crap, and run around. If you have documentation that says, hey, get the fire hydrant, or, you know, call the fire station, um, it'll make the process so much easier. So really make sure that you have good documentation that backs this up in case there's a crisis. Reddit. It is the place where your audience will advocate for you, but it's also the place where your audience will debate with you. Um, it is ideal for your kind of devlogs, um, asking for advice uh, or feedback and hosting public AMAs. Again, Ian McClarty does this really well. Notably, Ian uses his personal account on uh, Reddit. He does not use his brand account. And I would suggest that if you are a developer or a community manager that is looking to branch into Reddit, make them personal accounts. You could make them have like your little game handle like right at the end so people know that that's what you're um, representing. But I would say game branding should only be for your own subreddit. Um, but use personal uh, accounts to share. Because again, people like engaging with people. They'll be like, oh, Ian, he's making first mass contact. Um, uh, but they're not like, oh, first mass contact dev. They'd be like, who is that? Like, why should I trust what they're saying? Um, it helps that Ian has also released quite a few games uh, before. So he has like brand loyalty in that sense. Um, and also with Reddit, if you are gonna be going into different subreddits, be aware of the rules uh, in those communities because you don't wanna be posting something that where they say, hey, no promotions on there. Um, so just try and be as uh, natural and human as possible on Reddit. That is very much rewarded. And Discord, the final platform that I'm gonna cover today. Um, how am I going on time? Am I talking too fast? Am I okay? Oh, okay, I'm talking really fast. <laughs> I will take a sip of water. <laughs> um, so Discord, they're gonna be your closest supporters, uh, the biggest ambassadors, those that are most invested in your game, those who are asking for updates. Um, content goals here aren't traditional because you're not gonna be going in there and posting like a fun meme and then running away, right? Like what, what you can do across Twitter or something like that. You want to focus on curating engaging discussion and fostering growth. You want to give people a reason to stay in that Discord. Because if they, like when people come into a Discord, they are full of hype. They have just found you on Steam and they are so excited for your game. And they're like, yep, I've wishlisted it. I can't wait, when's it coming out? If you don't give them anything beyond, uh, oh, it's coming out in a few months time, and that it's like a dead community outside of that, they will leave. They will lose interest, they will not engage at all. 
Um, so you can do this by creating a number of channels. Um, I will actually go into the kinds of channels that you could be creating. I've got like a big slide on it at the end. Um, but make sure that you are fostering discussion. That's, that's the biggest takeaway from here. And also know that these discussions that you foster can easily be turned into content across other platforms. Like if you have like a meme discussion in there, ask those people who are in there, say, hey, we're gonna screenshot this and share it on our Twitter, are you okay with that? They might say, yeah, go for it. They might say, mm, could you blank my handle out? And that's totally fine. Um, showcase that you are having fun, uh, silly discussions in your Discord, and again, that filters more people in there. Um, it's also the best place to host like private streams and AMAs. Again, you can do those on Twitch and Reddit quite easily, but if you're not ready to be super public facing, you just want like a little cozy fireside chat, that's where Discord shines. Um, and you can also show off behind the scene moments of like dev offices or game moments, things that aren't gonna be going out anywhere else or things that are gonna be going there first before they go out across other platforms like a week later. Um, Lumi Interactive who are making Kinda World, they recently had like they've got a uh, split office team from around the world. They recently had some of their Melbourne team members go over to the US to meet their team members over there. That content was kind of being shared and discussed in their Discord before it was being posted on their Instagram and on their, um, yeah, I think it was just their Instagram that they showcased it on. I might have missed the other posts. Um, but yeah, that's how you can kind of let people know that, yeah, they're, they're a little step further, they're a little closer to the team and to the game than the general public. So I've covered all the platforms, at least all the ones that are probably the ones that I would say you should be using. Um, how do you track everything on there? Uh, you can easily track things like if you use a, a social listening tool, um, that's gonna be the, the way to get the big picture, um, but it's also the most expensive option. Uh, and indie teams don't often have budget to buy a, a software like Social Studio or Buffer to get the full analytics from them. Uh, so again, depends on your budget, see how you go, um, but it's very easy to track in, um, uh, mentions and stuff like that using Facebook's business manager. That's for both Facebook and Instagram. TikTok have their own analytics. Twitter have their own analytics. So just make sure that you are spending time. Again, if you're doing a monthly content batch, maybe once a month, do a little engagement report, see what's landing with people and use that to inform your next round of content. Um, I would say now reach is not as important to track as it used to, do, used to be, um, mainly because we're not seeing huge organic reach anymore. As I said before, paid is probably gonna be your biggest um, uh, kind of way to reach people. Um, but instead, like you can still track reach, but I would argue that sentiment is more important, especially when you are trying to influence your community to create content for you. Um, sentiment, if you're manually tracking sentiment, that means screenshotting, screenshot everything. Like if someone said that they are really happy with, um, uh, like, I don't know, a deep dive into, I don't know, 3D modeling or something like that, then you know that, okay, maybe next month we'll do another thread on 3D modeling on Twitter, and maybe we'll take that previous thread and turn it into something that can be shared across Instagram. Um, if you've got, like again, that's where if you are gonna be using memes, and memes are great, there's, there's nothing wrong with using memes, um, you want to see how it landed with people and why it landed with people. Because again, it might just be a one-off land and then you've got a whole bunch of new community members and you need to see what they like so you can kind of keep them around, basically. So now you want to, sh you've, you've created all your content pillars, you've been posting across all the platforms that I mentioned, now it's time to showcase user-generated content. Ideally, because you have, you're not telling your audience you have these pillars, you're not saying, oh, it's, it's farming and relationships and it's mining, like the Stardew example that I gave before, but by seeing your content, they would note that the developers are going to be talking about, um, they're gonna be receptive to fan art of the farmer. They're gonna be receptive to fan art of the relationships that are happening in the town or like questions around those things. 
Um, so you can create a hashtag. That's the easiest way to catalog content because all the platforms, that are, yeah, all the platforms except for Discord um, use hashtags in some way, shape, or form. Um, that's where you get your fan works, your gameplay videos, your reactions. But you don't want to be stealing content. You don't want to be caught where you are cross-posting fan art and someone says, you did not credit me. You didn't credit the original artist. So always leverage ethically. Like Make sure you get permission. Make sure you get written permission. That means going into like like an Instagram artist, going into their DMs, being like, Thank you so much for your support. We really like what you do. Could we cross post this onto our Instagram account and share your handle on there? Um, sometimes it'll work. If they say no, then like walk away. That, that is totally valid for them to say no because the last thing you want is to bring an artist or uh, an ambassador a whole lot of attention that they were not expecting. That is a PR crisis for you and them. This is the final big slide that I have before going into questions, and it's like a mammoth one because it goes into examples of user-generated content that you could be gathering um, across your time with your content strategy. So I'm going to run through it. Twitch is best for your gameplay content. That's where you're going to see streamers uh, advocating for you, also going to be maybe finding bugs for you. Um, I'd say that you should be finding those who are streaming. As I said before, go in, raid them, thank them, and champion them. Um, I don't, any, if any of you know Wayward Strand, they launched like a couple of weeks ago, I believe. Um, I talked to Goldie, one of the developers. She is in Twitch every day. She is checking out what people are doing, what people are saying, and thanking them. And it also informs like their story-based game, essentially. It also gives her an idea of what um, conversations people are having in the game so that can inform their content going forward. Who do we, um, who do we highlight? What's the next character that we highlight? Um, keep in contact with these Twitch influencers. Make sure you have a spreadsheet of your influencers and their best contact details um, because they're key to your launch strategy. Um, TikTok, very similar. Um, they're also going to be key to your launch strategy with those game cu curators out there. Um, if you are making a cozy game, there is a hashtag, cozy game. Uh, you can look through those, see the kinds of people that are creating content for um, wildflowers, uh, unpacking. There's, there was like a huge cozy game movement in the last month. Can you tell what kind of games I like to play? Um, because there was a lot of releases in September. Uh, so go there, approach them uh, thank them, even become part of the discussion so that when you approach them, they know who you are, they know who you're representing. Um, if people do create content for you, you're probably going to be seeing people talking about your game, like face to camera. Sometimes you see animations and sometimes you see um, like fan art on them, but it's mostly going to be face to face. That's where you use the stitch function or the duet function. Um, the uh, stitch function is when you've got the video, like the original video plays first, and you kind of come in and you talk over it. The duet function is when you've got the two videos side by side. So you can kind of, if it's someone saying nice things, you can probably um, engage with them by using the duet function and just like saying thank you and saying I really like your content. That's a great way to showcase content on TikTok. Um, Instagram stories, um, easiest way to like, post fan art and other people's reels to your stories. Um, they expire after 24 hours, so just be aware of that. If you want something that's more permanent, then you post it onto your feed. Uh, and that's where you leverage ethically. You go out and you talk to people about sharing their content and crediting them. Um, yeah, that's not much more to say on that. Uh, Twitter, it's the best to kind of showcase your traditional marketing press, because that's where traditional marketing press still lives. Um, so that's where retweets are the easiest way to showcase content. Um, but again, if you are going to be uh, posting an article natively, make sure you get the handle of the, the journalist that actually made it and thank them in the little tweet that you make. Um, it's also a way to platform your developers. Like you can have your um, brand account doing all of this stuff but you can also have your developers on there engaging with people. I will say with both Twitter and Reddit, if you are going to send your devs out into the wild, wild west of like posting on Twitter, 
make sure you train them. Make sure you offer some kind of um, like risk workshop or like a Twitter, like treat them like media people who need media training. Um, that's what you need going forward on Twitter because if they say something that isn't on brand or if there's some kind of risk that comes up and they are not prepared for it, you're all gonna be scrambling. So make sure you train them. Uh, again, with Reddits, uh, if you don't have a brand Reddit, fan art and like fan conversations are probably gonna be taking place in other Reddits. Um, so make sure you kind of monitor like, I don't know, r slash pixel art or whatever's most relevant to your game and see what people are posting on there. And you can easily cross post it. Say, mind if I cross post it to my personal um, Reddit account. Um, it's also really easy to kind of jump in on threads. Like if you've released your trailer on there, there'll be a bunch of, like in our game dev or on our indie games, people will have a bunch of opinions on there. If you have, that's where you make sure you have a developer or a community manager on hand to answer all those questions. Because then again, you haven't posted and run away. You've stayed around, you've listened to the conversation and people know that you are, that there's more brand loyalty there because of that. Um, and finally, Discord. That's where your conversations and themes will kind of naturally emerge over time if you are kind of fostering that growth. You won't get content from there immediately, um, but you kind of need to put in the work to make sure you do get that content. The easiest way to get content is to tell people where to put it. Have a screenshots channel, like make sure you have a play, or like gameplay VODs channel. People can upload little like 30 second clips into Discord um, or post a link to something that they have created. Um, that's the best way to utilize Discord. So you have a catalog of that to refer to when you wanna post content. I would also say when it comes to making sure people stay in your Discord, again, Kinda World does this beautifully. They have channels around the themes of their game. Uh, so, I mean, it's a houseplant game. Of course, they're gonna have an actual IRL houseplants channel, like show us your houseplants. But it's also a kind game. So they have channels around like self-care. They also have channels around like what other media are you consuming? Like this is your, this is your hub for conversation. It doesn't have to be conversation about your game 24 seven. And in fact, it shouldn't be because people who create their entire identity around your game uh, are going to be your biggest detractors if they turn on, if they find a reason to turn on you. So make sure they have a reason to stay around outside of just your game. Like maybe they've created personal relationships in there. They've like, uh, found friendships, they found a home. Like that's what you want people to kind of feel when they walk into your Discord. And that's it. Any questions? It is the third day, I'm totally okay. Yeah, uh, Mike, uh, that's what the volunteers told me. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Um, I was just curious, uh, I know personally for, for us, we're pretty small and there's only a few of us and there's a lot to get through. Yes. Um, and, you know, all of this takes an awful lot of time. I was just curious, um, would, it, would it be better to maybe focus on less platforms but deliver more content versus being across more platforms uh, but delivering less content? I'd say that's a valuable strategy, yes. Um, I would start off small and find growth in your chosen, like say TikTok, uh, no sorry, let's say Twitter is your chosen platform of choice because TikTok requires a lot of work because you're video editing the whole time. Um, if you start off with like Twitter or Instagram and then later down the line, you, you feel ready, you've got a community manager or two community managers full time, then launch your TikTok. But yeah, make sure you have an established presence in some way, shape or form. Okay, cool, thank you. That's right. Uh, hi, uh, hi, great talk. Um, thank you. I have multiple questions, so I'll go to the back of the line uh, <laughs> after the first one. Uh, one thing that I, I heard someone de talk about on TikTok that I was worried about if I got into it mm -hmm. is um, that if you have a really popular uh, video that you actually, you can be punished for releasing more content while that's popular. Is that true? Yes, that is true. So Vic's actually, Victoria went through that. 
thank you. She went through that in her talk yesterday as well. Um, and yes, tick. TikTok's algorithm is really odd. So I would say if you see that you have, like say you have three videos that are gonna go out in a week, like that's a very big content strategy for TikTok. Um, but like your first one went viral, um, I would say pause the other two videos, like remove them from being scheduled and maybe wait a week and see what happens. Um, chances are the, the video on either side of the most popular video is gonna get less views. That's just generally how it goes on TikTok. There's no way to hack that. So even if you replace it with something that's like a little more, I don't know, don't put your trailer after like your, your meme bait, basically. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks, that's a great talk. Thank you. Um, if you've got like a company channel or like a per game channel, what would you, like would you prefer to build up a, like a game channel that's very like focused on that particular content? Or is it better to try and funnel people to sort of a company account? It's a really tricky question because there is no one good answer. I've seen it work both ways. Um, if you're like a huge big developer like Bethesda, of course you're gonna have Bethesda and you're gonna have multiple game accounts there. Um, I would say it probably works best to have a game account just because that's what people are following you for. Um, but again, if you have the time and the resources, I'd say test these things and see what lands best with your audience. Yeah. Uh, hello again, great Hi. talk. <laughs> uh, so um, you mentioned uh, social listening tool. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually have no idea what that is. Could you go oh, more yeah, about what that is? Oh, yeah, of course. Um, sorry, assumed knowledge on my part. Um, so a social listening tool, they can also be social um, scheduling tools. So there are multiple tools. I'm going to take one that is called Amplify because I worked with that recently. Um, and you kind of log in and you funnel all of your social media accounts into there. So that's your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, right? And it will showcase to you um, uh, the comments that people are making across all platforms. So instead of like switching from tab to tab to see the, the comments and the engagement, it's all in one place. Um, and you can also, because it's all in one place, they go and um, get all the, you can schedule content from there and you can also get data from there. So that's what a social listening tool is. Um, they are generally quite expensive, which is why if you have the budget, if you're a larger company, then I suggest it. But if you don't, there's nothing wrong with using the free tools that Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, provides you with. Okay, great. Hello, how's it Hi. going? <laughs> um, I noticed in your presentation, you didn't really mention much about Facebook. Mm. Is that kind of a dead social platform for video games? Or? So I think I, I mentioned at the start that like, what, um, like Facebook is a little bit dead, like a lot of people are migrating off it, they don't like Zuckerberg anymore, which I mean fair. Um, that's, that's why people are moving off it. Uh, but it's also where, I learned this yesterday actually from Victoria, which I wasn't aware of, AdSense money are gonna, is gonna go the furthest on Facebook um, because it is kind of dead, it is the cheapest, so they will give you the biggest reach for your buck on them. Um, I would say the kind of stuff that I covered in the Instagram and a little bit in the, uh, which one was it? Yeah, Instagram and a little bit of um, uh, TikTok would kind of form your Facebook strategy. Um, so that's, that's probably how I would go about it. Like anything that you're posting to Twitter or Instagram, you can post to Facebook but I don't know if it's worthwhile now to have a Facebook account on there, especially if you are um, not targeting uh, like your, I guess your 40 onwards market. Mm -hmm. I'd say that they still live on Facebook, uh, but yeah, younger audiences are gonna be on TikTok. Okay, thank you. Hi. Uh, hello again, Hi. Uh, this is my last one, uh, but it's also the most vague, so if it's, if it's too vague, then we can talk later about it, or not at all. Uh, but, so I'm uh, more or less right now just a hobbyist. My goal mm -hmm. for marketing is that I like it when people play my games, mm -hmm. and it seemed like there's this sort of divide in a lot of marketing, because traditionally, the more people you get for marketing, the more of a success your marketing plan is. But would you say there is, uh, 
different set of advice if your goal is just to get a minimum level of engagement because you want people to play your game versus getting as many people as possible? Nothing wrong with being a hobbyist. Um, the, I'm going to actually pull from my husband's experience because he is a hobbyist dev and he has had really good um, uh, just engagement. He, he is quite happy just making the game and then getting people's eyes on it occasionally. Um, and he posts to Reddit. Um, he will just get people's eyes on it. And again, as the solo person, presumably solo person in your team, you're the one who's going to be moderating that account. You're the one who's going to be looking at it. So there's nothing wrong with like posting little screenshots or or like um, uh, he does devlogs. So like we'll cut up those devlogs and put them on there, and uh, then kind of answer any questions, direct them to your itch page or wherever you're going to be uploading. Um, I'd say that's quite a good strategy for a hobby dev. But again, you can also do that on Twitter. You can just put things out on there and use the hashtags. But because you've got an already existing community in Reddit, that's where I would start. Okay, great. Thank you. That's right. Any more? If not, like my Twitter handle is up on there. That's where I'm probably the easiest accessible. You can also add me on LinkedIn. It's the exact same name. Uh, I'll be hanging out around as well for the rest of the day and at the Agdas. So hit me up with any questions. Thank you.